Hey there! Welcome to your Dog Obedience Trainer Crash Course where I'm going to go over all of the basics with you, providing a little bit more um, understanding and help and explanation, as well as some demonstrations about how I like to do them, um, just in case you have any questions about anything uh, along the way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain um, each one of the things that I'm teaching, um, I'm going to cover some common issues that I see with clients that I'm working with, and then I'm also going to demonstrate as well. If you have any questions about anything you see, feel free to reach out to me directly or to drop it in the training forum, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So to get started, uh, for this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the three most important things that I teach all of my dogs right off the bat. And that is our association between either our clicker or our mark word and a food treat, um, a no reward marker, and the dog's name itself. The reason I go ahead and teach all of these things right off the bat is because we want to be able to tell our dog when they're doing something right, we want to be able to tell them when they're doing something wrong, and we want to make sure that they're actually responding to us when we say their name. So the very first thing that we're going to go ahead is we're going to build that association between our clicker and our mark word. Um, also, would like to say welcome to my beautiful assistants, Hershey and Bruce and Coda back there. Uh, they will be helping me out while I do my demonstrations for you guys. So the very first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and build our association between either our clicker or, or our mark word. Uh, whichever one you choose to use is totally up to you. I like to leave that flexibility because some people really like the clickers, some people would prefer to use a mark word, and both of them are equally as successful at doing the same job. So it's not really important what which one you pick, um, it's just important that you pick one and that you take the time to build that proper association. When we are building that association, one of the most important things to remember is that the mark word you're using is more important than the timing of the treat. The reason for this is because if we're already taking the time to build that association between the mark word and the treat, then there is no rush for the delivery of the treat itself. What is important though is the timing of that mark word because that's what we're going to be using to tell our dogs, yes, you have done what I wanted and a reward is following. The reason why we want to make sure that the mark word is on point and not necessarily the treat is because there's going to be a lot of training situations that you run into later on um, where it's just going to be physically impossible to give them a treat the second that they do the behavior properly. Therefore, by having that strong association, we can still communicate to them that they're doing the right thing and that a reward is going to follow. It's really important that you build this association before you move forward. Um, I see a lot of people that try to build that association as they are teaching another cue, um, and we don't wanna do that. We want them to know that anytime they hear that mark word that something rewarding is going to be following it. So in order to teach a proper association, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with approximately five to 10 food treats in my hand and then I'm going to say my mark word or click and then give them the treat. Again, don't worry about doing a super fast delivery because we want them to get used to that delay right away. That way they aren't expecting it. They don't start nipping at your hands or trying to like force you to give them the treat. So what it's gonna look like is just like this. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it from there because their eyes aren't necessarily facing you, but even after just the third or fourth treat, as soon as they hear me say yes, they're looking right at me expecting another one to come. When your dog is responding and looking to you for another food treat, as soon as you say the clicker or the mark word, you know that you have built a proper association between the two. So. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and teach them is their no reward marker. 
because like I said before, dogs are associative learners. Therefore, if we're never telling them what they're doing wrong, how are they gonna know that we want something else? So it's not just important to reward the good behaviors, but it's important to let our dogs know what they are doing incorrectly. Um, to kind of put this point in more basic terms that you can use to explain it to your clientele is think about when you were a kid and you would ask your parents something and they would just say no, but they would never tell you why. The only thing this does is it adds frustration to you because you're just like, well, why? Like, I don't understand why. Um, and the same thing goes for dogs. If you ask them for something, but they're not 100% sure what it is that you want, and you never give them any guidance as they're trying to work through it, it's gonna be very hard for your dog to figure out what it is that you actually want. Um, by using a no reward marker, we're not punishing them, we're not reprimanding them, we're just saying, no, that's not really what I'm looking for. I would like you to try to offer me something else. And what that does is it go ahead, goes ahead and signifies to the dog, okay, she wants me to do something else. So how I would normally go ahead and build a no reward marker is by putting the dog on the leash and then all I'm going to do is throw a treat out to the side and say ah, ah and let them attempt to offer me something else. I want to use the leash because I don't want them to actually be able to get to that food treat. I just want them to be engaged on it, give them that ah, ah and as soon as we see them do literally anything else besides trying to go after that food treat, we're going to go ahead and reward them for that. So like I said, normally speaking, I would have them, I would do it on a leash, um, but since Hershey is already a little bit more advanced, I'll show you what it would look like even without a leash. Ah, uh -uh. yes. Ah, uh -uh. yes. Yes. So like I said, Hershey is a little bit more advanced. Um, he already has a strong no reward marker, so he knows what I'm looking for. But in that video, what I was looking for him to do was just disengage from that food treat and look to me for direction. That's exactly what we want with our no reward marker. We want to be able to give it to our dog when they offer us something that we don't want and then have them redirect back to us so that we can ask them for something that we do want. Um, no reward markers are going to be one of your most powerful tools when you're trying to teach um, a differential behavior because again if your dog never knows that they're doing something wrong how are they going to know to offer you something that you want so we teach that right off the bat that way we have a way to tell them what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to confirm that our dogs know their names again because they're associative learners. If you've never built the association between them responding to their name, they're not gonna know what it is. A lot of people think that just because they say their dog's name again and again and again and again, that the dog knows their name. That's usually not the case. Um, so if we just take a few minutes to build that right away, there's no confusion, they know that we're talking to them. Um, the other important thing about teaching your dog the name um, at least for me anyways, is because I use their name as a preparatory command for almost everything else. For pretty much the entire time that I've owned dogs and trained dogs, there's always been more than one dog in the mix. Therefore, I use their name so that I can pinpoint exactly who it is that I'm talking to. There's a lot of situations where I want to be able to, to tell a dog to do something or correct a dog without necessarily riling up all the other dogs as well. That way, um, you know, that's why if you can say an individual's dog, an individual dog's name and have them respond, then you can address them directly without necessarily bothering all the other dogs around. Um, and it's going to be really good for when you start moving forward and you're trying to work with multiple dogs at once. So how we're going to teach them their name is we're just going to say their name once in a high-pitched, fun voice, and then we're gonna wait for them to offer us eye contact. Um, if your dog is really struggling to look at you when you're trying to do this exercise, another thing that you can do is use your lure, because um, inevitably, especially if you're teaching this in group classes, 
there's going to be students that just can't get their dog to respond or to pay attention. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to use our food lure. We're going to lure their head up and close to our eyes. That way their head is already going to be looking up here at the food tree. Once we have their eyes up there, we're going to say their name loudly and then wait for them wait to see their eyes shift from the tree to our eyes, at which point we're gonna go ahead and click and reward for that. So with my dogs, because they're a little bit more advanced, um, they all know their names really solid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my food treats to kind of distract them um, and then say their name and reward them when they give me eye contact. Um, so notice while I'm doing this, you can see if you might be able to see their eyes shift. If not, you might be able to see their head shift. I will try to move um, the food treats kind of out of the way. And what I want you to pay attention to is how I click and reward, not click, I mark and reward them the second that they actually make eye contact with me, not just when they're looking up at the food reward. So as you could see, um, each one of them, I was kind of digging around in the tree bowl to get their eyes away from me. And then I would say their name. And then as soon as they offer me eye contact, I would mark and reward. What this is telling them is that every single time they hear their name, they need to stop what they're doing and offer me their attention. And when they do so, it's going to be rewarding. Um, like I said, I use their names as a preparatory command for pretty much everything. I like to be able to say as few cues as possible and get the most amount of benefit from them. So um, for me, making sure that they respond to their name the first time every time is of utmost importance. Additionally, as you're doing this exercise, one of the most common issues that you're going to see clients do is they are going to want to repeat the dog's name over and over and over again if they are not giving them attention on the first try. You want to highly discourage them from doing this, okay? Um, always have them default to the lore method first because what happens when you have them repeating the name over and over again is the dog learns they don't have to respond the first, second, third, maybe even fourth time that you say it, and that as long as they re respond on the fourth try, they're still going to get rewarded. So now what you're teaching the dog is that his name isn't Coda, his name is Coda, 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 right? So that's why it's really important that we use patience when we're teaching this because we want our dogs to learn that they have to respond the first time every single time. Now, as long as we're on the topic of focusing and our dogs defaulting to us, um, I thought I would go ahead and discuss the focus cue. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to be able to give my dogs the least amount of cues and have the most amount of outcome from it. So I personally do not use a focus command. I use their names the same way that I would want the focus command to work. When I say their name, they need to stop. They need to default to me and give me their attention. And when I do say their name, they know nine times out of 10 that something else is gonna be following that. So me personally, I use their name almost exactly the same way that I would use the focus cue. And I teach it just about the same way too. So if you are one of those people that likes to have a focus cue as well, or maybe you have a student that wants to do competition obedience or more advanced things, teaching them another focus cue is going to be a good option. However, in my opinion, it is not always necessary. Um, but if you were going to teach the focus cue, it's gonna be taught the exact same way as we just taught the, their name. We're gonna tell them focus and wait for their attention, click and reward.
same, like same, same, right? <laughs> and then the same thing is if your dog is struggling, you can still use that lore method of like getting, of like bringing it out and then their eyes will be over there by the treat. You say focus as soon as you see that eye shift, go ahead and mark and reward that. Um, again, we want to make sure that our dogs are actually giving us their attention, not looking at the food treat. Because if you don't have a treat in your hand at the time when you're asking them to focus or for their name, they might not be willing to do it because there's nothing to lure them up there. So again, we want to make sure that with both their name game and the focus cue, you're rewarding them when they actually look at you and not whatever else is going on. So I hope this makes sense. Um, again, if you have any questions about anything I said during this video, feel free to either drop them in the training um, forum or reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but otherwise, I hope you have a great day and I'll be back for lesson two.